For years, when it came to piracy threats, the Horn of Africa off the Somali coast would top the list. But now the Gulf of Guinea off the western coast of Africa has become the new hotspot for kidnappings on the high seas. The violent seizure of commercial ships in the region is growing at an alarming rate, with the most recent victim being the Turkish vessel, the MV Mozart. The ship was attacked 185 kilometers northwest of the island nation of Sao Tome and Principe in the Gulf of Guinea on January the 23rd. Nigerian pirates took 15 Turkish crew members hostage. An Azerbaijani engineer was reportedly killed during the takeover. Turkish authorities said rescue operations are underway. And this wasn't the first incident for Turkey's merchant fleet. Back in 2019, pirates seized a Turkish ship in similar fashion in the same area. All 10 crew members were eventually released. So how dangerous is the Gulf of Guinea? And what security precautions are nations taking? And to answer that, joining me from Istanbul is Faruk Doğan. He is a retired naval staff colonel and maritime security analyst. And Scott Edwards, who is a researcher at the University of Bristol and lead author at Safe Seas a group that investigates maritime security. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Scott, why has West Africa become the new piracy uh, spot and why the Gulf of Guinea is considered the most dangerous sea in the world for piracy? Yeah, so there's always been quite significant issues in the Gulf of Guinea um, in terms of maritime insecurity and, and the management of waters in the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, and one of the problems that we're seeing at the moment, uh, in the Gulf of Guinea particularly, is higher levels of violence, but also an increasing sophistication as well. And, and the attack over the past few days kind of demonstrates this, as, as pirates are able to target ships at distance further from shore. So you have this kind of twofold problem whereby attacks are becoming more sophisticated and violent, but also other hotspots or traditional hotspots places like Somalia and Southeast Asia are also being managed um, possibly to a better degree or, or they're kind of being controlled um, in a more stronger way. So, so these are kind of declining as significant issues at the same time the Gulf of Guinea um, is kind of increasing as an issue. Yeah, so um, Farouk, in the latest incident, 15 Turkish crew members were taken hostage. Uh, what do you make of it? Are sailors' lives in danger? If any harm was done to them, which country would be uh, held accountable? How the system works? Could you talk to us about that? Um, okay. Accor according to the news, the, the crew members have taken uh, to some place, uh, un to an unknown place, in the uh, uh, land. Mm -hmm. uh, up to now, there is no contact uh, with them. And, uh, but uh, as far as I know, the system works like that. They find a contact point and uh, try to contact with the governmental uh, staff mm -hmm. uh, in order to get some ransom for the lives of the, uh, our crew. Yeah. Uh, so uh, our government uh, members are waiting for uh, some stuff. Also, they are using their uh, embassy members uh, in that uh, area mm -hmm. uh, in order to contact with the pirates. Okay, so Scott, what kind of measures should be employed uh, by coastal states or, and regional organizations to stem such attacks? Yeah, so I think there's definitely lessons here that can be learned from other areas like the West Indian Ocean, where you saw quite a successful um, response to, to piracy. Um, for a start, like one, one of the kind of key areas would be for states to kind of take ownership of the issue and have this kind of local ownership. So they are able to kind of coordinate better um, and create like a multi-stakeholder institution. I think similar to the contact group for piracy off the coast of Somalia, which is now seen as a very successful um, model for this. Uh, and this is particularly important because one of the issues that we have in the Gulf of Guinea that we didn't necessarily have to such a strong degree um, in off the coast of Somalia with problems of sovereignty, which, which makes it more difficult for international actors to respond without kind of really strong um, local ownership and, and this kind of multi-stakeholder approach to improve coordination, to improve information sharing. Uh, and one thing that international agencies could do in this is to help kind of develop capacity mm -hmm. for local states 
Um, so providing equipment and training um, for, for across the board for like enforcement, patrols yeah. um, and prosecution and things like that. So far, how has the Operation Atalanta helped reduce the number of such attacks and incidents in the Horn of Africa and around Somalia? And could a similar operation be launched in this region? Yeah, in Somalia region, in Somalia region, it's not the only Operation Atalanta by the uh, European Union, but also NATO with Operation Ocean Shield, and and most significantly uh, the uh, coalition forces, which is called uh, uh, Con uh, Counter Piracy Task Force 151, and totally uh, there were almost 35 nations and uh, more than 40 ships and assets in that small area, uh, comparing to this Gulf of Guinea, worked together in cooperation, uh, and they provided, uh, they provided uh, harmony and synchronization. So uh, because of that, because of this effort, uh, piracy has been diminished by time, and for the last two years, it's almost zero. But in this area, this, uh, we cannot say the same thing because there are only some kind of limited regional efforts. Uh, and on the, on the sea, there are uh, not capable ships, capable crews by the navies or security forces. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, we are looking for some international interest or international attention to this area. Fortunately, there are some good news that uh, NATO is... Uh, pro, uh, began to provide a new initiation, which is called the Southern uh, Strategic Direction uh, for South Hub. And also, yesterday, the European Union uh, declared that they are going to uh, they are going to establish a uh, new uh, f uh, concept for this area. It's apparent that they are going to uh, send a kind of force or some kind of uh, initiate initiative in that area. And I believe that this kind of international initiative will uh, improve, uh, improve the counter-piracy efforts and uh, it will go down. The numbers will go down. So, Scott, International Maritime uh, Bureau recommends that the ships to remain at least 250 nautical miles from the coast at all times to stem uh, possible attacks. Do you think it is viable a solution or more needs to be done in this respect? Uh, I think more needs to be done in this respect. I, I guess one one of the kind of things that we saw in Somalia was, was the the establishment of these um, high risk areas and corridors where where international patrols were able to assist um, ships in in certain areas. Um, and I think for this to work, there would potentially need to be a kind of similar thing in place. But as discussed before, that this is extremely difficult because of these issues of sovereignty. Um, but within the Gulf of Guinea, I think this is a viable a viable starting point at least because especially until now a lot of the the attacks have actually been taken place in territorial waters or the exclusive economic zones uh, so it shows that pirates are not yet able to consistently kind of attack ships further away from shore but then it does create a lot of issues in terms of logistics as well yeah but this latest attack was farther from the shore than usual uh Farouk. what does that mean uh, well, uh, oh, Fire, please. Oh, yes. Okay. Pre previously, the, these attacks were uh, taking place near the coastline or ports yes. or in, in Anchorage. But uh, we see that uh, this attack was uh, all, uh, almost 200 miles away from the coastline. And uh, this shows that uh, pirates' capability to reach the open seas have been increased by time. So they are they are uh, increasing their capabilities, not only to accessing to far away ships, but also using some kind of technological equipments. For example, in this, uh, in this specific, specific case, they used a kind of, a kind of welding machine or uh, industrial mobile saw in order to uh, take away the hatch door uh, inside the ship. Yes. For, uh, so, the, the pirates uh, pirates are also improving their techniques and tactics by time, uh, and uh, it shows that they can uh, access 250 miles away from the coast. But it, uh, it's impossible to keep this far from the coastline because uh, ships using 
in this area yes. because of their uh, mutual trades in that area. All right. It seems that we need a unified approach to solve this problem. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk.